describe it. Gonna so I'm just going to like set the stage a little bit for all of you. So first things first, this process is in the art. So maybe you very curious. Uh -huh. That's great. Oh. But it's actually for the artist. Never had a relationship with, really with a theater theater, um, but felt compelled by so social circumstances to start performing again 
realizing intuitively that it made it could turn things around in a big way for people it could be like really powerful and really healing. And in the women's movement, we started kind of broke into these huge fights and battles that were just like burn it down, burn each other down. And so I started performing again because of that, even though I was so scared to perform. I was I've always performed just a little. My feet, my hair is like a, a hair's thickness less than me caring about whatever the things got me to do that performance. So um, I did one called City Watertown Number Three that got to tour a lot. About I spent three years interviewing construction workers um, about the building of New York City's third water tunnel and the mayor and I've been doing that kind of work since '87 um, and solo shows mostly and one show with actors which was incredibly challenging but um, on Abundance American Money that uh, toured in 2003 and um Moved to Maine and has been spent the last eight years helping other people make art, figuring out non-arts-based issues in city government. I've been in the city manager's office for eight years in city government. Uh, the police did a play that I wrote for them and directed in response to a shooting in the community. Um, uh, racism incidents resulted in story workshops with the public service workers and that kind of thing. And now I'm back to the theater, I'm not in the city. Anymore, so doing some more coming up. Yeah. Hey. You're so You talk about a lot of the work, and I just encourage both of you to be as specific as possible. Okay. So that's awesome. It's not actually very useful. That's awesome because I just want to that. And to maybe start with affirmations. Yeah. Mm. And how much time are we talking about? Um, I'll, I'll keep time so you don't have to worry about things. Okay, great. Well, that was awesome. Because, and I will get some very specific stuff too. Uh, I think um, what was lovely to see is, and, and a real joy to observe is this uh, true marriage between these visions. I ever, it looked like one piece. These people were very multi-talented, multi-integrated, and that was something that I, I really enjoyed as a spectator. It didn't feel, it felt like you had made ensemble happen. And I have a lot, that brings up a lot of questions for me regarding like how it happened, which I'd love to hear about. Um, I think uh, the, Kent, you had spoken about you know the empty space and not having props and uh, even if you didn't say that, it was evident in the work because I think I really appreciated your use of time. Mm -hmm. I thought time was really well cared for in this piece, mm -hmm. uh, just allowing and also this joy of like taking a lot of distractions away. One of the first images I just, just I wrote suit blue suit blue mm -hmm. and just. That's a lot of information for people sitting on chairs, suit blue, suit blue. And just uh, being able to have the time to just um, observe that, take that in. And I, already my narratives are going, 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 going. And I'm, you know, I, I can be allowed a way in. And so I, I thought that was very successful. Um, I felt very um, allowed to have that experience. So I appreciate it a lot. Um, maybe I'll just refer to some notes yeah. here. Uh, also, setting up the first moment of, of using breath in the first gesture and just and, and where that comes from, you know, it, it allows us to, I think that actors were very skilled in their ensemble feeling to be able to allow themselves to be surprised by when that so um, I really appreciate that. I appreciate, and this is in Eric's other work too, that something was going, oh yeah, the, the, there was a child delighting verbally in what was going on in the call, and, and you just acknowledged it. And I also love that. Like this aspect of the meta that you put in the piece um, at certain sections throughout, I think is also as a, as a, as a genre, we maybe 
it opens the dialogue for that of how we're we're commenting on ourselves and um, and I thought that that was successful in terms of where how that was happening. Um, this is a really play, you know. <laughs> I think he says. You know, really this Danielle says. That. Danielle says that. I'm sorry. So um, <laughs> that that whole thing of just of just like commenting on yourself, the banality of the first real dramatic thing being um, a piece of tape on the ground. Um, <laughs> It was just kind of so weird um, that it was interesting to me. And then you realize that it's not just some out random moment, but that there it's actually very thoughtfully a way to get you to your next space. So then, so then it becomes a marker for your chair, which is also a comment about a play. And then, and then it so it's setting up all of, and then it sets up this whole other section of the chairs, the chairs, the chairs, the chairs configuring. And so getting all, getting mileage out of out of the one thing that you allowed yourself to have, you know, or you, you used maybe the drawing over there, the little benchy stool. But but anyway, so that was that was very satisfying to kind of be to have this experience of being um, intrigued by this seemingly random act, and then to have this follow through. Um, that was very satisfying. Um, the idea, the thought of speaking when absolutely necessary came up for me, which it, which is, I think what was happening is that, that the first story didn't come out until, you know, like verbal storytelling was the last thing that we received in experience as it progressed. Um, and for me that felt right because we were learning so much just in the movement and um, we, your story was being told in so many other ways that then then there was a moment where it became very compelling. I remember also the moment where Danielle was being threatened. That was another that was another very compelling moment for her to speak, um, raising the stakes there, <coughs> which I appreciated. Um, so I thought there was a lot of care with, with the use of text mm -hmm. and how it was presented. There was the idea of we, which was intriguing to me. We were there, we were all there, we were there. Every story was about us, and I began to think, what is us? Who is us? Us, your children, your childhood mates, your dorm room mates, your, you know, <clears throat> my kid just went off to college, it's like her dorm room mates in a car with an accident, and then I started going off in my personal life. <laughs> it's like, oh. but, um, but the, yeah, just, just this idea of we, who are we, is a very powerful pronoun. So I appreciated that provocation. Um, and then just like the chorus and the hero. You know, this the concept of like, there's one person carrying the story and the chorus is, is ground basing. You know, was very clear and very well used, I thought. And satisfying. For me, with time, repetition is just like, I could just, it's like this toast on with spreading butter. Just so satisfying to just see everybody like, do the same motion all at once, or then later repeating, seeing a piece of choreography and seeing it repeated again, it, especially with modern dance, is useful to the viewer because we didn't get it all the first time. Mm -hmm. So then you, you get to chew it up and enjoy it or experience it again. So those are some strong points that I felt were really successful. Um, some. Uh, I, uh, one just thing is like, hey, you've got chairs. I would be really interested, so other things that if, if you were to work on it again, if you were interested, um, things I'd like to see or explore questions I had. Um, I'd like to see the chair being used in other ways, and maybe they are in this extra, I just didn't see it, but like, you know, you have a chair, you could stand on it, for example, like open up the vertical space. Um, you did use it in other ways. What are all the ways you can use that chair? I think it would be really interesting to see. That's one thing I said, I thought of. And then I just started having a lot of questions and anxiety when we got to the part of the story that is difficult. And you know, I'm still asking myself what part of that is um, choices that were made and what part of that are just things that I would do differently or have, want to see differently. And that has to do, of course, with Tara's storyline of you know, starting to be oppressed. You know, and I was, uh, so, so I will address the parts that maybe first that I think are 
just stuff I'd like to see, and then I'll address like the content. But um, I, I was just like, we have these, uh, okay, for me, I see a beautiful woman on stage, and I wanna see her do something more than just be beautiful, because I feel very, very strongly that you can do more than that, and I wanna see that. That means you were given a lot of like lyrical voice, beautiful singing, and you're very, she's very uh, talented at that, and I bet you could make some other kind of sounds too, ugly sounds, different sounds, like I wanted, more soundscape that allowed us to see more of who that, because this character, then we dig into her a little more. So I'm, I wanted, as a woman, I wanted to see her totality instead of a representation of her being the, a young, beautiful, um, fragile victim. I'd like the, you know, uh, put that word into the room. Yeah. Um, I want to see her power too and her complexity. Um, so that was something that was coming up for me. And, um, and then also, then I was like getting very stressed out about this trio where the two men are. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, she can lift people. Well, why would she? And then I understand directorially that that's where that was going, just like the echo of the tape. You had thoughtfully put that piece before the next story. So, you know, I'm interested mm -hmm. in what other people have to say. I also wanted to say, um, just comment that right after that, a person next to me said, was that rape? Was that an act of violence that just happened? And I said, what, what do you think? And, um, and you know, anyway, it, it was prov provoking, thought provoking, uh, emotionally provoking, and I thank you for that. If this was a San Francisco audience, I would go farther. That's, I don't know what other audiences are. It I said if it was a San Francisco audience, I would maybe go farther. Meaning deeper, and it's like I want to respond. Uh, sure, meaning uh, I can see more, and I, I felt that there was a suggestion of what happened. I'm not saying that I need to see more violence on stage. I need to see a deeper addressing of what that means, um, and that can take many various forms. So that's me personally. I don't know if, and that means, what does that mean? Like, does that, is that her struggle only, or is that just more deeper complexity of this character? Or, I, I, I have an idea of what I think happened, um, and what I interpreted. Uh, I, I guess the reason why I say audience is that it depends on audiences. What is the age? Who are the people? What is, who is being affected? What is the level of, understood trauma. I don't know, maybe, to be sensitive about that. Um, I will wrap up. Uh, so that's a very, and it's a hard topic to talk about. I can only give my emotional, like, you know, emotional and aesthetic response to it. Um, but I thought that the work was very well cared for, and, and we were well respected, like, uh, in terms of what we thought it should be, or what our interpretation of what we were seeing was. Um, and so I thank you for that, and um, I really want to see the whole piece. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Can I um, just add something that occurred to me that I, I do sometimes in my choreography classes, so it's sort of just more efficient. So if somebody, if it's all right with you guys, yeah. if you say something that like that you, you hear somebody say something that you agree with, it can just sort of like like we snap or do this. So that visually, people or or our own people can see that more than one person has this opinion. That doesn't have to be restated again. Can you just for five minutes? Some know what five minutes is. Has a last? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I'm not surprised that several of you said you wanted to learn more about the process because I thought, um, wow, right? Wow, whatever the hell process that was, it sure came up with a hell of a good piece. Um, and how they do that, and uh, and uh, it, you said so many good things that I would I would agree with. Um, uh, so don't want to repeat them, but uh, it I think one of the elements in theater is uh, is the love. Um, 
and kind of rigor that gets brought to making work, both on the part of you truly like amazing and moving performers, but also the directors and however else that happens. And that was so clear right from the beginning. We were in. It was like the game is on. You know, we are together. Um, and that kind of control and confidence and, uh, and playfulness. And I think a lot about joy in theater and, and the element of people actually, uh, even if it's a tough play, um, there's a perceptible human uh, way you can pick up that the people are actually enjoying what they're doing. They are where they want to be and it is communicatable uh, regardless of the topic. And so I really felt that. Um, and I thought the, the quality and the skill that you all brought as performers and also directors and uh, in choreography. And in choosing the stories was just, uh, uh, um, it was joyful because it's so <coughs> much fun when things are that good. Uh, it's just fun and for me in theater or any of us, you know, I assume it's at least half as painful for everyone else when that's not the case <laughs> as it is for me. Um, uh, and um, I thought I was very impressed. You know, I write my own shows, and I was very impressed with the with the writing and the editing. Uh, um, and I don't know what that process was, right? But uh, it, it really was good. It was well done. <laughs> It was good about it. it. You didn't have extra, um, extra stuff in there. There was no fluff, uh, and it had a point. But there was an elusiveness uh, that I easily confounded in performances uh, um, that are non-traditional. And I realized years ago I needed to quit wondering what it meant. That that would be a helpful ad. Uh, but but I was. What I described to somebody earlier was there were enough breadcrumbs um, that I didn't start disassociating. Or the, I wasn't battling kind of any buzz of confusion, and yet I truly didn't, you know. And it was a nice preamble, but the piece itself kind of let it happen in the way it was titled, which I think is just so helpful. I mean, just to help us, you know, help give us the map, a shared version of the map that we get to be fully engaged as well, you know. Um, and uh, and do keep prompting, okay? Like Gatsby would okay. say, be more detailed or whatever. That's good. I don't mind that. Um, and uh, you know, just you all are good. Just just technically, right? Or technique-wise, whatever. Uh, in the dancing and in the story delivery and in your relationship to the audience, just really um, open-heartedly respectful and very aware that that this is the stage, you know. Um, and that we are a part of it. So, uh, a couple of things that stood out. Um, you really <laughs> did a nice, a nice kind of uh, 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 thoughtful thinking about the the, the that dance. Um, the trio. The trio, thanks. <laughs> And I, at the time, I had a similar responses of being kind of disturbed. And anytime you see something that's disturbing, as a theater maker myself, in the way that I am, um, and thinking about the whole, I know I'm stirring a lot of stuff in going there. And that's where theater should be going there. That where else would the hell would we be going, right? If we're not going to those tough places. But then you're obviously taking on a responsibility that it has, it, there's an arc there in whichever direction that arc is going. You know, there's an arc, and I couldn't tell that the story afterwards, although I thought that ending was just, uh, uh, to the story was just perfect in terms of like an almost, thank That was five. Oh, so good. Yeah, so time. one more five. Yeah. Um, and, and almost perfect was how it came to me, and, and I can't be that much more helpful right now, but it felt like it, it was not a match for what just happened. Um, and I don't know that, it, it, I don't intend that it has to be some balancing act, you know, between getting things like, whoa. Um, Can I clarify? Are you talking about at, what happened after? Or after the dance, the story that came after the, the dance, yeah. 
And I was thinking in terms of directing, like, and also whoever puts these shows together, uh, are you, you know, is the person thinking, you know, even at the time, I was like, oh, wow, were they thinking, well, that was upsetting, we better put in a, you know, should the story, did it, would I have put the story before it, you know? Well, then, would I have recorded the story and had the story running as that dance was dancing? And I don't have any conclusion, but these were the kinds of things I was left thinking about, was like, do one of those things not belong, you know, or do they belong differently? Um, and again, saying this is where theater should be, so that's not the issue for me. Um, and the other thing that um, that gives me a chance to say something during this part of the talk, other responded, was the song. And um, I wasn't sure. It's you know something can work perfectly, and then the next night it's like one thread got pulled out, and you know it's all a little pieces on the floor, and I, I didn't feel that happened at all, but I started like so excited, music, you know, recording, oh my God, good voices, singing, and about halfway through, I felt like, why are we still singing the song? Um, and then I thought, well, Martin, they just were very exercised, you know? <laughs> maybe they just literally, you know, we are trying to think about ourselves, maybe they're trying to, you know, get their, get their, uh, get their energies back. So um, it was beautiful, it was well sung. Um, somebody who speaks Spanish said they thought that there might be some issues about the Spanish that was in it. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to, other than to share that with you so you know it, it, it was mentioned. Grammatically or? Yeah, grammatically and that they couldn't figure, they, was, they were confused by it, they thought maybe there might be something in the song itself that was not accurately translated or whatever, I don't know. Just to throw out, it's, it's yeah. Ladino. Oh, that's and that's amazing. the other possibility. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> so they, they shouldn't have been confused. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah. And so it wasn't that there was music. It was, it was yeah, what was happening there. Um, and uh, yeah, good. Um, I'd love to see it again. I'd love to see the whole piece. Oh, capacity was one kind of thought I had, was about when you make theater, how do you think about, how do we think about the capacity, the capacities in the room, like what can these performers, right? Mm -hmm. Like what's possible? How much can they give and when you structure a piece, you know? Um, and I thought the capacity was really impressive, like with what the performers, what you all could hold, what you could offer, what you could sustain, what you could build. It was just seemingly like, it, Wow, you know, to be there, to be present, to actually be that engaged, and that is kind of the point, right? And so I thought that was very well crafted, and it made me think, what the hell? This is one third of the show? Yeah. You know, and then I didn't get to see the rest, so I was just thinking, wow, you know, is this, they, they pulled this off the whole night, so perfect. Okay. Thank you. So now it's, uh, we really gave them hell. We did, yeah. <laughs> yes. Medic. <laughs> Medic. Yeah. So yeah, now it's sort of up to you to, to ask questions, to respond, to and I would I would just offer that you don't have to explain or defend anything if that's not useful to you. Mm -hmm. It's because sometimes I just take a feedback and I just go think about it. And that's so you don't have to do any of that. But whatever is useful to you to, to bring in the room and you know, it can be like questions and spark. Um, what what I've been really interested in with this process is um, uh, sort of how we came together. I come from a dance background, and, and the Cortesco folks come from a theater background, and, but we're both interested in, in transcending those backgrounds. And, and my hope for the piece is that, yes, there is dance that happens, and yes, there is theater that happens, but that you're not thinking about that. <laughs> Um, and not thinking about technique or, um, oh, that must be the dancer, that must be the. Um, and I'm curious if anybody can sort of say what your experience was with that. Are there places that have happened? Are there places where you were taken out of it by those sort of categories? Um, anybody in the room? Anybody in the room? Right now? Oh, okay. I would definitely like They're to talk about it. Because <laughs> um, in my own work, I find that's what I'm also trying to 
figure out like how is that now it's a thing and now it's the thing right. you know and so um, I really that's what I was so impressed by really and why I want to know about your process because I felt like they were very one uh -huh. like there was a lot of mystery as the pe as the unrolled uh -huh. as it, and things were revealed so so much was said through the movement that I didn't find, oh, this is now a choreographic moment because they were so weaved. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were so one. Um, and I like what you said about the ne this necessity of the language when it was time um, or important for that to shift. But it, it, everything was um, how you made transitions in the space um, into one thing to the other. It was all movement and theater at the same time. You really successfully did that, I thought. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'd push back slightly, which is to say, uh, you know, in terms of all the things that I've seen in the advanced theater, I, I think you did do very, very well. And yet I still felt that there were transitions from one to the next to the next. And I, 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 I thought those transitions were pretty small. Um, and they were close to disappearing. So I encourage you to keep keep me there. And it's just specifically mean like when's the moment of dance where the dance takes the lead and where's the moment of text where the text takes the lead. Um, or and and then what and where does narrative live in relation to the, those two things? Right? I think it's pretty close, but I think you can take it further. Can you like mention a moment where you're like, oh I'm I'm switching from one to another? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, um, you know, the moment where Eric, towards the beginning, Eric tells the, his story, mm -hmm. and then we go, and everybody goes into the dance. And then Eric's like, wait, 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 let's not go into the dance. And it, it, actually, that's a bad example, because that one sort of felt that was right. That one was <laughs> right. Um, there was, I don't know if it was right after the halting or later, but it was, there was a, the story being told, and then there was a moment where all four of you got up, stepped down a little bit, and did a, a, a movement sequence or or dance, and you know, uh, or moments when they were all in the chair and then they did the we're all turning this way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know. I, I actually don't. Let me rephrase it. I don't know that it's possible, or I don't know how you do it without a sense of transition back and And maybe it's not a problem. But I felt like it was pretty close to somehow suddenly all mm -hmm. together. So I was hopeful. Mm -hmm. that. And, and I also I just one more thing a little specifically on that. And this may also reflect a lot about my you know, where I'm sitting from as a viewer, because even though I've been making dance theater, movement theater for 15 years, 20 years, whatever, there's still a little bit where where I would say, hey, when you switch from this story to that other moment and then to this story. It's like I'm still prioritizing in my mind the spoken narrative in terms of, not in that I'm more interested in it, but in terms of that's what demarcates the story for me still. So and, uh, uh, that may be my problem uh, more than anything else. Well, and I was going to say, I mean, I, this is something that I found helpful in working in this kind of way that may or may not be helpful to you, but. I felt like watching this when you all were telling the stories and there was all that kind of movement stuff and you were like, you know, they were doing like the slow motion running and stuff was really great to have the movement elements to, to enhance the storytelling. And I felt like um, that maybe some of, it was sort of like in those moments, the movement leaked into the kind of more theatrical storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I think I wanted to see more of the theatrical storytelling leak into the dance. Mm -hmm. And and for me, um, a lot of times in my work and things that I really attach to, especially when I'm just seeing dance, in particular like modern and contemporary dance, is gestural work. And like and 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 I think there were times when I wanted in the midst of uh, you know some of these beautiful lifts and, and really cool uh, movement stuff that was happening to have moments where it almost broke and you just had a really simple gesture that was very pedestrian that kind of grounded us back into the, not even reality, but, but, but back into the maybe more theatrical elements so that they really didn't feel like they just kind of slipped in and out of each other. Um, and, and 
because uh, I think when you were when it was a little more theatrical, the dance came in really effectively, and I, yeah, it would be interesting to see how some of that could make its way in the other way around. Mm -hmm. And my primary training is in, in dance and choreography, both um, modern and modern dance, and like Indian classical dance to give some context. So, um, in your the duet between you and Keith, um, which is this you know beautiful partnering duet with beautiful use of like negative space and some really lovely surprising movement moments. What I really appreciated about it was the way that what also is very like, I don't want to say conventional, but familiar partnering strategies mm -hmm. um, were infused with a clarity of character intention mm -hmm. that is usually not there if you're mm -hmm. looking at a dance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was very satisfying to me in a moment <coughs> that, that narrative was spoken through the body in a way that the text didn't also enforce. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciated that there. And then to go back to the, to the other sort of Partner, the trio, which we've been talking about in relationship to the the rape, quasi rape, almost rape violation story, um, I saw that. So it came before, and I was watching it, and rather than disturbed, I was annoyed. And I was annoyed because, from my context, from concert dance, it is so normative to have the men lift the women, to have the men manipulate the women, to have the women have no physical agency that I wasn't like, oh, they're making a statement, they're telling a story through this, it, I'm just like, they're doing that again. Mm -hmm. And they're not thinking it. That was my, that was my conclusion. Mm -hmm. And it was also because of the beauty of the technique, especially on Tara's part, you know, like, her like, nice lines and pointed feet, and, and I was thinking about, um, which to me, uh, undermined the violence. Mm -hmm. And, and, it, and that it also didn't have quite the clarity of the emotional impact I saw in the duet between you and Keith. And so I then later, and I was talking to people, and I was like, oh yeah, I guess those two moments were related, but I only figured that out later in kind of conversation. Um, and then, and so at the time I was just like, doesn't she have, you know, why can't she pick them up? How come she can't fight back? How come, you know, da da da. Because I was just like, they're making this choice again. Like everybody always makes the choice everybody always makes. Mm -hmm. so, those two moments mm -hmm. there. Yeah. I just want to take that even a step further. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think all of this is, I, I love the piece and I love, mm -hmm. I agree with a lot of what's said. I was not annoyed, I was really angry actually. Mm -hmm. um, because it wasn't even, and, and I, it wasn't even just those normative moves, but there was something about the fact that. Um, and, and I agree, it's because there's this beautiful woman there who is, who is you know, having this power and all of a sudden, boom, it gets lifted out from under her. And, you, and rather than do anything, another man was able to save her just by doing this. And that pissed me off. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you're in that trio, what you when she takes the run it, or when she's coming down from you know this that, that that movement there it's like I'm I'm encouraging her and forcing her and like backing her up and supporting her as best I can from a from a drum. Mm -hmm. um, so like I'm watching her journey and I'm like oh like I'm rooting for her or something. Um, so that's my intention when I'm playing is to you know be that witness that's um, present. Yes. To respond to your initial um, question about the integration, mm -hmm. um, yeah, for me, the, the duet really did stand out as some, like it was, and I don't know if it's because I've seen you guys perform before, but I was like, oh, this is the part where these guys who dance together dance together, <laughs> you know? And I maybe wouldn't have felt that way if I'd also seen the women do something similar, mm -hmm. you know? So, just putting that out, but in terms of the the line of the whole thing. Obviously, I know we're only seeing a portion too, so maybe we didn't see that portion where those things happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the piece um, had more integrated. You know, it felt more of a whole, so that stood out more. Mm -hmm. 
there, there was a transition, for me, if there was a transition moment that, that seemed a, a little um, abrupt but not on purpose, it was, it was getting, it seems to me it was getting into that. And I don't know, I don't even remember what it was, but I remember, I remember thinking, oh, here we go to, to this. It just seemed like it was telegraphed in a way that you didn't need to. Well, an interesting question is if the trio informs that story, then does the duet inform another story regarding uh, yeah, yeah. the male men's experience mm -hmm. that maybe we didn't hear? Um, just a question. There's a lot missing. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. right. <laughs> right. So the, the women actually do have a, a duet together, and they also have probably the two largest scenes in the show uh, that, that they carry together. I mean, <laughs> they didn't. Uh, yeah, that, that's why I think yeah. seeing a fragment is always yeah. challenging. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> many of our comments yeah. and points of view may be not at all like But, but it, it's, these are really helpful comments. Can I ask a question about and the Joe, element of the book? They're actually still in charge right oh, now. Yeah. So, yeah. What's that? I said you, the oh, artists are still actually in charge of directing. Uh, and that is, that is the element of symmetry. And that the symmetry of the, you know, the men and women, and the actors at the top, and all of the, the sort of spatial relationships at the top of the show are so pronounced. Mm -hmm. And then it, it goes away. But I wonder if during the course of the big show, are there moments where it comes comes back in that pronounced a fashion. And I think that there's, because of communication, I think that there's a, that, that we do this thing where we, where we all feel like we're on the same page and then we go off into our realization that we're not even close to being on the same page and then we get back together and we sort of come back to the same page and then we go off again. And I thought it was a interesting, um, commentary on how communication goes, and I didn't know if that was a thing that was revisited. Uh, it's, if that's where the show ends, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, I figure, I figure yeah. it had to be somewhere. Yeah. You know, we, they invent this game at the end, which is, uh, that's the transition into society, so they're creating society. And it's a silly game, and the audience has fun kind of trying to figure out the rules and stuff. But it ends up in an argument because they're all games do that. You argue about the rules, and, and mm -hmm. someone's cheating, and yeah. someone's making strategy, and uh, bankers have figured out this, and the hedge guys have figured out this, and, and they uh, they finally end actually with um, the resolution is that they take that anger to those four seats in front of the audience, and they're silent for several minutes, and the audience watches them go from anger to neutral, to a little bit of, of uh, we call it the Mona Lisa smile. Um, we're mm -hmm. we're going to fight again. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd love to hear from the performers who are here as well, on kind of whatever they want. I don't have a specific question yeah. somebody else does. That's fine. I have a specific question, but I also wanted to make sure that Ken or Sean, if you had a particular right. question or a particular kind of feedback that you wanted from this group that you we're hearing lots. Can't you go? No, I don't think so. Okay, we're good. We're good. So then we can, we can just keep having conversations. So, can you talk? I should, can I ask you how that trio feels to you? Um, and the next in the story, and also the story after, but yeah, how it feels to you as a performer. As a performer. Yeah, sure. To me, um, I'm not really from the dance world. I think uh, this is the first show I've done, especially kind of like, and for me, um, when we started it, it was just really fun to be a part of a trio. I've never done it before. Mm -hmm. uh, it was also sort of a, a, like a research piece for me to look at how um, how the, the voice comes in and out of movement. Um, and I, I guess I want to say I really appreciate this, like you, you bringing this up. Um, I think it's really good to talk about. Um, but being being within it and sort of, since these are, many of these are our stories, and Berlin was my story, um, it feels like, um, 
it's such a line because it's like, well, the, the, that was an experience. Mm -hmm. And it was a story that I brought to the table. It's like, hey, well, this is a story I have. And when we decided it was an ensemble, that it was something that we wanted to show. So I'm, I'm really interested in how, when we have these stories, how to treat it in a way that, um, that doesn't send the message that this, this weak woman is being objectified. You know, while still being able to use that because we feel that it works in the piece. Um, and I think maybe within, within the rest of the show, where you see more, um, more variations of our characters, it's not quite so stark. Um, and I'm interested in, um, so while in the, in the um, moment, you know, where in the trio, where I first saw your leg go up, I was like, okay, dance. So just in terms of that, however, I feel like, yes, I was disturbed, but I'm not angry that it was represented this way because I'm sorry. It may not be how we want women to be. However, there are soft, beautiful feminine beings that have things happen. And sometimes someone does help. Like I just felt like I'm troubled that that happens, but it didn't bother me that like you were making a choice that is being called normative like, from a choreographic perspective because I felt like I'm troubled and I don't know exactly what's happened because until I hear the story, right? Um, but I don't actually feel like it's your responsibility to create dynamic women in all roles, and that that's the you know that that's what you have to say to represent women in the theater. I feel like I love strong women, but things happen. I, I don't know. So I'm not troubled by the way she was represented. Um, to me, it felt it was soft and unsettling, but it, I, that doesn't bother me that that was there. It's more bothered that the choreography wasn't unsettling, that it felt normal to me. Well, but that's yeah. partly what I mean. Like, I get like, that one could, you could take a place of um, angularity and, 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 and restraint, and there are definitely places, but that's not necessarily what this story was. I felt a sense of the, 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 the emotion of the, the character as communicated through the words and the next section was very unsettling. Like I felt very with that story. I was very present with it. I was very present with the situation. I wasn't present with the dance because the dance just looked like the dance I've seen 2,000 times. <laughs> 200,000 times. Well, yeah. Also, I mean, in relation to somebody break, said something yeah. about yeah. Um, your beauty and and how fluid and and in that that I mean I remember a moment when you kept sing you were singing while you were doing con the contact work like you, it was a physical moment and it, like maybe maybe that's it like maybe there's the possibility that it's not so pretty it's you you know we're not so fluid in a moment emotionally yes. Yes. Okay. That's like that so that maybe there's it. You dis disrupt that fluidity and mm -hmm. beauty yes. there, and, and, and even maybe go farther with how you're playing with singing and how that, you know, you wouldn't sound so pretty, you know, in that moment. I, I could know. see the yes. dance, I could see the dance happening without the female, um, and then the story following. Uh, mm. um, being, uh, even more evocative and you know and, and having more wouldn't have necessarily the disconnection that I was feeling the way it was. Um, but Danielle I did wanna I hate these when the performers don't get a chance so that may be me and you may choose not to say anything. But I don't I'm not happy when these end without hearing from people who've done so amazingly and been such a part. So. Hmm. Any questions? <laughs> Which company? Oh, Grotesco. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, so yes. everybody did. Okay. So you did. And Keith had the line. Keith had the line. The stories all came from company members. Yeah. Could Could you? Have
clarify a little bit because some of what I'm wondering in terms of everyone's response to that moment. Um, you mentioned that the women have quite a bit to do in other sections of how they're represented in other sections, and is this pretty? Is this one story pretty typical for? for kind of the entire piece of how they're represented, or is this sort of one facet of how women are represented? Because I feel like that makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Can I say something about um, it? I'm really appreciative of this feedback. I feel like this is challenging stuff to talk about and give feedback on, and I really appreciate the way people are talking about it. Um, it's, it was so interesting because I felt when we got to that section last night, it felt very different than it had ever felt mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Doing it in this room and, and in, in the piece, in the context of it, because in the whole piece, it feels like just such a departure at that moment, and it feels much subtler. It felt very explicit somehow last night. Mm -hmm. And um, in the whole piece, I feel like we're, we're, there's almost not so much gender for me in, in a lot of the piece that discover, we're discovering the space and, and I mean there's gender in our costumes but um, and then a lot of just how the how our roles develop and the stories come out and then that is sort of the first time I really feel gender very strongly as in that and um, so I think it's, it's not typical and it just felt very different it was interesting it just felt um, Oh boy, this is one of those intense. <laughs> <laughs> one, the pieces of the room did change. Yeah. One gift to you is that I saw gender, and it was useful throughout. Yeah. There was never a moment where I wasn't aware of it. Right. So it's there. Right. Mm -hmm. I felt relationships. Yeah. More than gender. Uh huh. It just that too, very much. I'd like to get back to your question. Uh, the women actually invent language in the piece early on. Uh, Tara speaks Persian and she's giving a language lesson to Danielle and it's very funny. Mm -hmm. It's very, very funny. And then right <laughs> after this piece, uh, they do a scene where they're in a dressing room trying on clothes and they're very mean to each other. Mm -hmm. They're very mean. I mean, it's, you know, women being really awful to each other. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then the, the play funny. goes someplace no. else. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I noticed last night in the, the little particular piece we chose sort of ends very dark. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the whole play, it goes dark and then it gets funny again. And then it goes crazy and sort of chaotic and they have a fight and they're angry and it ends on this sort of a little up no, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So the relationship of the women does change a lot throughout the piece. Well, I don't know what y'all's background is, but I thought that the, the male duet was really great. I love a good male duet, especially with real partnering at lists. And mm -hmm. I think it would be kind of fun if you all continued working on this to play with doing some real weight sharing and contact and prop between the two of you because I think that's, or not even just two of you, I mean like, you know, can you lift him? Can you know, like, can you can you really do some things? Because I think there's there's some real power with that on stage when the women start when there's a back and forth that sort of shift back and forth between like I'm picking you up and now you're picking me up and like. Um, yeah. uh, uh, I have a question about the process that you work with because I think this is a, addresses a lot of what we're asking now about sort of beauty and the grace and things like that. And I know before you, oh, you said, well, you came up with gestures and then you gave it to him and he kind of danceified it. Mm. And then you uh, <laughs> made it more, I forget what the word is, can't be used, it was like made it more pedestrian or made it more narrative or something like that. And I think that this is kind of the roots of some of this because uh, you know, dance, uh, dancers are, are taught, and it's a great generalization, whatever, but, uh, you know, dancers are taught to be very uh, uh, beautiful and graceful, and uh, actors are taught that they can be beautiful and graceful, or they can be awkward and, and stupid and, and, and floppy, and a lot of other things. We have a greater vocabulary, which is certainly great, and I know this is a generalization. That's okay. <laughs> you know, but I, I find, like, in working with my company, uh, if we have dancers, we have to spend a lot of time getting them to be like uh, clumsy and awkward. And, uh, you know, it's probably just their particular training. But I, I really would like to hear more about this kind of back and forth, uh, 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 about how you work together and how you kind of share this process. 
shapes and, and, you know, they, they really worked hard. And so uh, kind of choosing the right partners is the most important part. Uh, if we had a classic modern company that we were working mm -hmm. with, we never would have come up with the same show. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it allowed us, we've done several projects in between. Uh, I went there with a net grant to work on text for, for dancers, which was a big leap. And, and um, you know, and then we invited Eric into this, and, and his his contribution became really big, and it, and it was backed by Vandaline. Mm -hmm. uh, and the companies were close enough that we could cross those lines very quickly. So we could send them gestures, they would make it into uh, a form of dance that, that our actors could, could perform and, and interpret so they could add on to it. So it was, it was really, I think, the right uh, collaborators. Mm -hmm. It was probably the most important part. Well, also, the one thing I'll add is that because we've been working together for 10 years, I feel like this piece was really a continuation of the work that Della and John and, and the ensembles were doing. And, mm -hmm. and what I'm liking about this process, because I feel like we're still in the middle of it in Jennifer, is that we have these questions that have been fermenting. And like we're looking at a lot <coughs> of the same questions, and we've tried them in so many different ways. And, that feels exciting to me, to go deep in that. And some of the questions. Well, a big one about what is dance and what is theater and what are we doing and um, how do we be human beings on stage and not in, um, only technicians and and how do we make something that's meaningful to us and the audience has a powerful experience? How do we go into dark places together? How, how do we cut through a lot of the, um, the ritual of theater? But, um, from a theatrical perspective, becomes fairly hollow uh, because we forget where it comes from. So for us to go back to Peter Brook to an empty space and to say, how can we put actors on stage <laughs> and make every moment real, uh, that was really the focus. What do you mean by the original theater? Just like... Well, we, we, um, mm, there's, all, there's all these rituals of delivering a text, telling a story, um, all these things, sets and costumes and all that stuff that, that um, we associate with, that's how we put a play on. And, and it's, it's, yeah, and it's very difficult, very difficult to do that and make it all real. Um, usually, you know, a large portion of it is not. And, and audiences sense that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I can speak to that a little bit as, as an actor. This, this work is a real departure from what I usually do. You know, I'm always doing scripted plays, classical, contemporary, and you know, very strict blocking and very strict you know play analysis, and uh, it's it's very here and very technical. And um, so this for me was a real treat because um, and also a little bit of a challenge because I don't you know I'm, I I am the character. It's it's me pretty much on stage and so my first <laughs> in the very beginning of the uh, of the um, rehearsal process I was confronted with okay how do I not overact myself <laughs> how do I you know how do I do that so I was really negotiating my craft um, as a trained actor into something that was more exploratory and, and really, really a treat. Mm -hmm. Movement, being able to be part of a dance space. <laughs> you know, yeah, I get to move on stage, and I was, I've really been craving that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being, you know, corsets and, you know, looking here and looking there. And <laughs> so I, uh, it was like I just wanted to break free. And right, so right. this has been a treat for me in, in that respect. So we're over time, I, I can feel there is juice in the conversation, and you're welcome to continue it until the plenary starts at 3.15. Yeah, 3.15.
between sets three and three right now. Um, so uh, they're great conversations. You should continue them. You can even just sit here and do that. I just wanted to let you know in case you're like need to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I just I want to respond. Um, first of all, I you know I apologize for my what my anger uh, and that my anger would you know was with you. It, that's not. You know, or, or or what you know occurred and what happened. So I, I apologize for getting so angry <laughs> um, uh, and passing a judgment on it. Um, what I when when you say it, that it makes total sense that it, that if it was your story, um, I think we this is I, as a as a playwright I get into this a lot when I'm when a I, I write myself, characters that are somewhat and based on myself in some situation, I'm very passive. Whereas in life, we're even our choices to not do something are not passive. Um, and so I don't think it's about what you actually did in that moment. I think as I think it's always hard for us to make ourselves when we're I'm not, I'm not saying this exactly, but we, we make ourselves too passive as the character because we see life as happening to us, right? That's what you do in life. Oh, this happened to me, and this happened to me, this happened to me. But in theater, yes. each character, and in truth, you know, in, in reality, we are making a choice every time, and we're making an action. So maybe it's exploring the, the choices that you did make and just knowing that it so that you're not seeing it all as happening to you. It did all happen to you, but you did something, whatever it was, whether it was to stand a certain way, to back away, to you know whatever. So maybe just exploring those those choices. Um, I like your anger. Yeah, I mean, because one of, you know, the piece is about communication, so part of what we wanted, we wanted to definitely make sure the audience was clued into they are communicating to us, mm -hmm. and we are communicating back and forth. Mm -hmm. A little spoiler mm -hmm. alert, before we play the game at the end of the play, mm -hmm. Tara asked the entire audience to stand and sing the national anthem, because that's what we do in America, we <laughs> sing the national anthem before games, and you should have seen audience reactions to that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, they freaked out, and then they were reactions. They would almost get into conversations amongst themselves because some people would stand up and do it, and other people wouldn't, and then there was all this discomfort about it, and it was a great moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I heard something about somebody who was not a theater person per se, and uh, brought up a very interesting question, which is, John, you had given me prologue explaining that there were gestures created and they went to, they were dancified and then brought back. Um, he said, if I hadn't known that, I don't think I would have been as interested in the gestural work, right? in the choreographic work. And it's always, you know, to bring points to that question is in the process, how much do we learn in all the process? Yay, continue the conversations on this. Thank you. Thank you.